Chapter 13, Sing Down the Moon, page 67. On the first day of Kanada, 21 relatives and many friends came to our Hogan, also Bitter Water, the medicine man, and his singers. My mother dressed me in my best tunic and gave me all her turquoise and silver jewelry to wear. She combed my hair so that it felt loose around my shoulders and tied it in the middle with a string of sacred buckskin. Everyone told me how handsome I looked. My aunt, who was very old and never had been married, said that I was too pretty for any man she had ever seen. I walked back and forth in front of the Hogan so all my relatives and friends could look at me. I walked there for only a short time because my mother brought four sacks of corn from the storehouse and led me to the big grinding stone. The womanhood ceremony lasts four days, she said, so we need lots of flour to eat. You are not good at the grinding stone, but now you must put your mind to it and make four full sacks of fine meal. And my best clothes and my borrowed jewelry, I knelt and began to grind the corn. I worked for only a short time. My cousin came to me and said, wood is scarce. I laid my grinding tool aside and went to the bottom of the orchard and chopped an armload of wood and stacked it in front of the fire. Then I began grinding corn again. After a while, one of the neighbors handed me an empty jar. Your mother tells me, she said, That's, that goat's milk is needed. I jumped up and ran down to the river and found a goat and milked it and brought the jar back. Again, I began to grind the corn. Then my uncle came. Your aunt wishes a blanket, he said. It went on in such a fashion all that day. Everyone wanted something. Everyone gave me orders. I was flying here and there, and between times I knelt at the grinding st stone. This was to make me industrious and obedient, my mother said. During these four days, early each morning, I had to run east, south, west, and north, as though I was running a race. This was to make me a good runner. Furthermore, I could not eat sweet things, nor anything with salt in it, nor drink too much water, nor was I allowed to scratch myself, and I was told to sleep as little as possible. These things were to make me comely. The fourth morning, men relatives dug a large hole in front of the Hogan and kept a fire burning there all day. Toward evening, when the fire died down, the woman lined the hole with corn husk and poured in a lot of mush, covering it over with more husk. At nightfall, we ate some of the corn cake and went into the Hogan, and I sat on the west side across from the door. Then the medicine man sang the twelve songs. The other singers chanted lucky songs about sheep and jewelry and soft goods. They chanted all night. I had to keep awake and listen or else I would have bad luck. Just before dawn, my mother gave me a basket with water and yucca root in it and helped me to wash my hair. Then as the sun came up, I ran out from the Hogan toward the east past the orchard and the cornfield. All the boys ran after me, even tall boy, who still had not gained his strength. We raced to the river and back again, but it was not a real race to see who could run the fastest. For if any of the boys had won, had beat me by so much as a step, then they would become old and toothless long before I did. I like that. <laughs> I had hoped that tall boy would not try to run at all, but he was the first to start after me. I ran much slower than I could, hoping that it would help him. This he did not like. He shouted at me to go faster. You run like an old woman, he cried. I went a little faster and came to the river and floundered around, pretending to slip on the grass bank. My grandmother runs faster than you, he said. His words made me angry, and I began to run as fast as I could and left him far behind. Pale and out of breath, he came in last. The rest of the morning, he went around scowling. I tried to make him smile, but he would not forgive me for running fast, even though he had taunted me. You do not need to feel sorry about my arm, he said. It is getting stronger every day. Soon you will be bending a bow, I answered. You do not think so, but I will bend many bows before I die, he said. I think so. No one thinks so, but I will, he said. That afternoon, when the relatives and friends and the medicine man and his singers had gone, my mother sent me to the field. She gave me a sack of pinto beans and a long pointed stick. Though I was now a woman, I had to work the rest of the day planting seeds. Tall boy rode through the field on his way home, but did not stop. You think that I went to the white man's village just to rescue you, he said as he passed. You are wrong. I went there for another reason. I watched him ride away, sitting stooped in the saddle, one shoulder lower than the other, and my heart 
went out to him. So that was the end of page 71, uh, chapter 13. So in your learning journal, you have um, pages 20, which is vocabulary, and page 21, which is where you need to place three facts from the reading selection that show how Bright Morning feels about Tall Boy. You could take a picture and use the editing tools to show the text evidence and put them in your um, slide there. So I hope you guys are doing well. This concludes for the week. Um, we'll start chapter 14 next week.